Welcome to Actions Detrimental, episode three. We made it to the third week, which is the first week of our season. I am fresh and hot out of the race car. Uh, four hours ago? Four hours ago, we wrapped it up. So, a uh, great weekend for Ricky Stenhouse, winner of our Daytona 500, his team. Uh, just a great accomplishment. I mean, you know teams like this, they they live for these weekends. These Super Speedway weekends uh, are ones that teams like JTG are all in on. They, they push their chips in on, on these weeks because they are less competitive on, you know, these regular racetracks that we go to um, where, you know, you don't have the restrictor plates or the super speedway racing that levels the playing field. So awesome for them. We've seen some crazy winners over the last few years, for sure. Um, the last uh, three now with Ricky, Austin Sendrick, Michael McDowell, five wins combined between all of them. And all of them, all the wins have been super speedway wins. So very cool. Yeah, really happy for Ricky. And I think one thing we kind of forget about, like it's, uh, uh, missed in in winning this race is that yes, it's the you're winning the Daytona 500, right? That's a big deal on its own. But you're also the first car into the playoffs. So Ricky's secured right. his spot. He's in the NASCAR playoffs for 2023. This is big. Th- that this team probably just jumped at least probably eight to seven, seven or eight spots in in the standings. They're they're going to finish in the top 16 you know, again if we don't have more than 16 winners. I predicted a few episodes ago we would not have more than 16 winners this year, so we'll see how that pans out. If it doesn't, then they are going to be in the top 16 in points based off of their finish here in the Daytona 500 by winning it. So, And and from an economic standpoint, I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, moving up that many spots uh, with the historical and how, how NASCAR pays out for the charters, that's you know probably going to be six dollars $700,000 jump uh, uh, for them in the standings, which is – you know, huge payout on top of whatever they make for the year end. This is probably realistically a $3 million win for that team. So, you know, all in when you think about where they're going to jump in the standings, what they won during the race, all that. So, uh, so great for them. I know, you know, I, I know uh, Tad and, and Jody DeShector pretty well. Uh, I've had a few dinners with them. Great people. I mean, they've been in this sport for a very long time and uh, they're grinders. They, you know, they don't have huge manufacturer support and doing things on their own. You know, I know for a while they did their own aerodynamics and stuff like that. Um, so really, you know, proud for that team. Uh, they're, they're grinders and, and great people. Uh, Brad Doherty as well as an owner. Uh, great for him. Uh, I believe that's the first African-American owner to win the Daytona 500. So, so that's a great accomplishment. Um, and Ricky, uh, you yeah. can't say, say enough about Ricky. Uh, I know he's, he's pumped about it. Me and Ricky are great friends. He just won my golf guys tour. Those of y'all who do not know the golf guys tour is basically the golf league that I run as well, which is mostly filled of, of people in the NASCAR industry, uh, who enjoy playing golf. So you know, the way we work it out, we play about eight events a year and we have a point system. We all work off a handicap. We have a Stableford uh, format. And Ricky uh, has now, I think he's a three-time champion of the Golf Guys Tour, which is drives me crazy. I've won it twice. Kyle Larson's won it uh, once. I don't think there's been any non-driver. There has. Brian Williams. Brian Williams, uh, just a guy uh, down here in South Charlotte. He he won it. Uh, But Ricky has taken over the the title of best NASCAR driver golfer. I loved Ricky's celebration tonight because a lot of people probably don't know. I've gotten to know Ricky quite a bit through you, obviously, um, and just recently. Did you? Didn't you take the pictures of when he got engaged? I did. Yeah, he calls me. Um, actually, a buddy of mine texted me tonight after the race and said, uh, "Hey, you know, you know, congrats to Ricky, blah blah blah. Um, if Pro Sport is posting for him tonight, you need to put this." I was like, "No, actually, <laughs> he's not a Pro Sport driver. Just yeah. you know, close friends. He, just." Just Special project. Heads up to any of the girlfriends out there. If if you no, randomly notice Jared is following you on your vacation, you're probably going <laughs> to get proposed to. You, like you're the yeah, go-to yeah, guy. That's true. Like you know, when I heard, uh, yeah, I'm going uh, hiking with Ricky and, and Madison. I'm like, oh, I guess he's getting married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, dead giveaway, chicks. Uh, you, you got uh, Jared on your trail with you. 
things yeah. are looking up for you. Yeah. But Ricky celebration night real quick. Um, recently, uh, Ricky, uh, Riley Herbst and myself, I've been climbing now for six months, um, pretty consistently. Ricky just got into it. He got himself a membership. So when he won this race tonight, he climbed the fence, which I oh. thought was cool. That's um, cool. Yeah. You, I, I don't think it has anything to do with what we're doing on the side once a week. But did, uh, I mean, did you did you get this itch for uh you know from watching the movie Free Solo? Uh had a little bit to do with it. Or a lot of it to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a that was a great documentary, by the way. So yeah, so great for Ricky. I'm I'm super happy for him. Uh he he is a great dude. Um we have a ton of mutual friends. We play golf together all the time. Uh, he is the true underdog story, I think. I mean, when you listen to all the pre-race, not many m- people really mentioned Ricky, even though he's got some resume stuff to back up why he should be warranted as a guy to look out for. But he's been pretty silent since, I think, his wins back in 2017 at uh, Daytona and Talladega. So uh, quiet, underdog, won it. Um, this race is just becoming more and more unpredictable every single year. It's, uh, you know, I found myself going into this race thinking like, how do I want to approach this? Because normally I just, when I feel the pack is getting unstable and I can see guys running into each other a little harder than what I am comfortable with. And I think that they're going to wreck. I usually just back out and say, you know, fuck it. I'll see you guys later. But it's so hard to pass in these next-gen cars on super speedways. As you could see, the, the lines were two by two that you just can't go to the back of the pack um, it, it really any point and really come back, and, and especially towards the end of the race, right. and, and, and make a charge. Like I remember being you know 20th sometimes with a couple laps to go, thinking, ah, oh, well, I still got a shot. Like I came out on the, on the last pit stop, 18th. And I, I basically told Chris, I'm like, we're, we're f- like, I mean, I got nowhere to go. Um, I thought I was in the position I needed to be. I was seventh, the first non Ford uh, in line. And um, I'm like, you know, we still have to pit. So that cycle happens. And we just, we, we, I think we messed up. I mean, if you look a couple, you know, a handful of Fords, literally a handful, probably five pitted. And then me and Truex pitted by ourselves on the following lap. Yeah, I I think I think we f-ed up. I mean that's just b- beyond. So Truex had. Let me try to explain this to the people. Okay, Truex had seven more laps of fuel in his tank anyway than I did. So seven laps of fuel. Um, I'm just gonna round out and totally guess here. Let me just say that's a second and a half more fuel that I need to take to pack my fuel cell full to make it to the end versus Truex. So I come on pit road, Truex is right behind me. Well, I leave my pit stall. All we took fuel only and we took, we had to take a certain amount of fuel. So let's just call it. We had to stop for fuel for five seconds. That means I had to stop when they plug in the car with fuel. I need five seconds of fuel. Truex probably only needed three seconds of fuel. So, with only two of us that decided we were going to pit together, he comes out on pit road two seconds ahead of me. And the time that we lost by not being bumper to bumper leaving pit road, that is another two seconds of detriment that we had for our 11 team. That So the cars will go faster. We're drafting even when we're running 65 miles an hour. Like when we hit the end of pit road and we start accelerating – If you have two cars that are bumper to bumper, they will accelerate at least two seconds faster around the racetrack in one lap versus one car that leaves and then a couple seconds later, another car leaves. So add in the two extra seconds of fuel that we put in, add in the two seconds that we lost not accelerating up to speed because we only pitted with one other car or planned to, that puts me four seconds behind, bam, I go from seventh or eighth to basically last yeah, <laughs> of the cars that came out on, uh, you know, inside the last fuel window. And that just, I just, I was, I was screwed at that point. Well, you see the cars that are in the lead towards the end of the race. So you had, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you had four packs of cars pit together. You had the first group, which yep. was that leading group of Fords that yep. the RFK cars were in. Your 
three or four car group is second. And then there's another three or four car group with Ty and Christopher Bell. Then the big group. And then the big group, which had Kyle a Larson lot of Chevys. Yes. Yeah. Which and I, Ricky was in. Right. So yes. I, that was that was a key key moment. So not only is it beneficial to have your tank as full as you can towards the end of the race. So by staying out longer, those Chevys that stayed out the longest, they also had to take less fuel because there's less apps in the race that you need fuel for. So they were able to stop at a shorter distance anyway. So that was a big move. I, I, I kind of, you know, we all, when we got back to the house, we, we went upstairs, we watched the last fuel run because I was very curious on, okay, where was Ricky in this whole thing? He was 20th, yep. by the way, when the green flag stop started. He was 20th. So he was in not a good spot, in my opinion. But he executed really well. I watched. He moved himself up the Chevy line by getting on and off pit road well. And the Chevy strategy of staying out a little longer and with a bulk of cars was hugely beneficial as well. And they all linked up quicker. So... Chevy's Chevy's won the strategy game, in my opinion. Um, it's interesting. I, I we usually if we we don't have as Toyotas, we don't have an alliance with anyone, right? We're all independent, but we always fight numbers, right? We, we're always at a disadvantage on numbers, and with there only being seven of us, right? It's so hard to get us in one place at one time because there is so few of us. Yeah, but we finally got it towards the end of the race where. We were. Uh, it was at the end of the second stage. It was me and Truex and Ty and a few other Toyotas, and we're all in the top line. And I'm thinking in my head, and I, I, I said it after the caution came out. I'm like, I was such an idiot. I should have tried to make an attempt to pass Truex to at least block the inside lane, which Fords then freight trained us at the end of the second stage because they had six Fords all lined up. If you block the track, they can't go anywhere. So... I think we flubbed up there as well, like not blocking the track, which is also, in my opinion, if I fast forward, where RCR f***ed up. They they should have not done that last lap restart, in my opinion. Of course, it's hindsight's always twenty twenty. It didn't work out for them. It could have easily just worked out for them, but it didn't. They I, I think they should have, because I said it earlier in the race on my radio, block the racetrack. If you want to win, and we we talked about this in have, our have meetings, one of each car lead, one of each, each car lane. in each lane, because yep. there is no third lane, right? So block both lanes, and that kind of gives you. One of them's going to be leading. Yeah. Otherwise, you put all your eggs in one basket, which they did on that green white checker, and say, "All right, we're just going to put both of our cars right. down the bottom." And which you, they, if I had to get in their head, it was probably they had Byron behind them, so they were probably thinking, "Well, let's get these three Chevys all in line." Sometimes you just at the end. You got to say, but you saw with RFK screw the too, numbers, huh? Right? You saw with RFK too, though, that they, those two cars were together for a majority of the race at the end, right? And Kyle and Austin were behind them. There was a point where those car, Kyle and Austin, leave or pull out from behind the RFK cars, and the RFK cars are swallowed up. Yeah, it, it was because the third car in line was the Chevy. They were confident that the third car, what, right? It's all about numbers, right? So. Those two cars, the RCR cars that made a move on the RF car, K cars with two to go, or coming to two to go, they were confident that Byron was going to go with them, which he did. Uh, so they made the right move at the right time, especially you want to get the lead anyway. Like people wait till the last lap. God dang. Y'all saw my tweet. That drove me crazy watching the end of the Xfinity race. Everyone running in a single file line, like 13th with two to go. Like, what are you doing? Um, but they did the right move. They Kyle and, and Austin made the right move to uh, try to get the race in control before it got to the white flag because most likely we were going to get a caution, which we did. Uh, but, yeah, they they were in control. They just – they tried too hard to help each other. I mean, that's just kind of – that's kind of what happened. But uh, clearly, I, I thought RFK were the two strongest cars. Is that kind of what you saw as well? Yeah, it certainly looked like it. I mean, when they're running together, it helps give yeah. that um, impression that they're the strongest cars. Yeah, yeah. for years, it's like everyone's just like, oh, Penske's so great. I'm like, they are great, and their cars are fast, but they just are always bumper to bumper. So yep. whatever move the front car makes, they just get followed, which makes it easier. It is funny. You said on last week's episode who your top five super speedway racers are. You mentioned Brad. 
You mentioned Joey. Um, did you mention Busher? I did today. Okay. How about this? So, Oh, on the pre-race show. On the pre-race yeah. on Fox, they asked me, who are you going to have to beat to win the race today? First, I says, Joey Logano. And second, I says, you know what? I left someone off my top five super speedway racers that deserves a mention. And I think he's going to be someone that is going to be in the picture of who wins today. I said, Chris Buescher. He was in the picture. They finished second and third. So <laughs> they definitely were the guys that Ricky had to beat to to win it. And uh, they just, Chris is, yeah, he, he's, he's moving up that list. I mean, he's probably a, a top five guy now. My results here in the last year, you might as well take me off the <laughs> list. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, it's tough. It's it, tough. It's just tough because you, you, you know, that the circumstantial things, the, the, the percentages of, of the circumstantial things that you need to have happen to win that percentage has gone up. Like it's, so I have an observation and you've kind of, you're kind of leading me into this with what you just said. I feel like, and tell, tell me if I'm, if I'm completely wrong here, but I feel like after this race, you were more dejected than what I thought you were going to be because of the circumstances. I feel like now, like you just said, there's so many things that have to play into your favor that when you get out of a car, like in this race, it's just like, you know, I did what I did. I did what I could do. Um, you know, the pit cycles didn't work out for me, whatever. It is what it is. But this one, I feel like it took you a little bit longer to come to terms with it. It, it did the because works. the way the end of the race played out, the manufacturers didn't mean like I, this was a chance for me as a independent, mm -hmm. you know, only having a couple teammates out there yep. still running to like win, you know, we weren't overcome with Fords. I mean, while Fords are, are, are great in the sense that they go out there and they work well together, by the way, they, they crash together too. They, that, you know, they, they take most of the, whenever there's a wreck, when you all run together and you stay in a line together, you all crash together. So you're not diversifying your portfolio by having everyone just follow each other, uh, especially if there's a wreck. And so I just, the way the race played out at the end, it was like, dang it. I, this was an opportunity. The field thinned out enough where I, 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 I could have had a chance, but that last cycle, again, it's, those are just the, I guess that's the execution percentage that I talk about. Like we just kind of missed it on, on that X, that part. But again, we didn't have as much fuel because there was a caution that came out that other guys came and topped off, but we yep. had such a good track position. We couldn't afford to do that. So I don't know. Like I said, it's so hard to get the, you know, the slot machine to hit sevens, you know, on, on any given day, but it did for Ricky Stenhouse and his team. Uh, which is great. So, yeah, I mean, I thought that the race was fairly tame. It was. For, for the most, for most of the day until the second stage. And I came on the radio. Well, hold on, let me back up. At the end of the first stage, it wasn't a little tame because me and Joey had a little thing on pit road. So you, it's my job, right, to make sure that, you know, I, I try to – keep my wheels straight, go down pit road and make sure I, you know, I'm aware and the, and the spotter always makes you aware of when someone's on the inside or the outside of you. Right. 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 Well, I come off of, I, I accelerate, I get to pit road speed and I'm on the outside of, okay, so this is after you pull out of your, yeah, box. I pull out of the pit stall and I'm, I'm halfway down and I'm on the outside of someone. I think it might've been Gillen. Okay. It was another Ford. But anyway, but then Joey was pit. He always picks the very end on pit road at Daytona because he likes to come in hot, get to a stall, then get down to business and and uh, accelerate. Well, he got he was just barely on my right rear corner, right? But I'm I'm being respect. I know he's there. Clearly, he knows I'm no dumb. <laughs> like I know he's there, so I'm giving him room. But then somebody comes out, leaves their pit stall. And squeezes Gillen's Gillen, Gillen so pushed up the track. pushes me up, and I'm literally grinding the side of my car against Gillen because I know Joey is in the outside of me. So I'm trying to be a nice guy and not run him completely into the grass. But I guess he, you know, I got nearly run in the grass, so he probably dipped a tire in the grass. And he came mm -hmm. off, the, you know, pit road, and he, he, you know, gave me the bumper and was shoved me, and I was like, I was just like, <laughs> you know, f you pal, like, how do you but, not know that like I, we're four wide here? So. I, but 
like 10 seconds later, he pulled up beside me and gave me the old hand wave. Like, okay, I, I got it. I know they told me they, they, like, that's the sign of like, okay, they told me what happened. We're good. Yeah. And so well, in, the we're good. in the Twitter video, you flip him off. Right. And then he's, well, like I this. was, I was just pointing to the cars below me. Oh, down here. Yeah. I pointed to those cars <laughs> that that's their fault, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, it was good. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's uh, that's the only thing I had really interesting. I, I finished eleventh in both stages. For crying out loud! I think on every super speedway, I finish eleventh on a stage. I'm always in great position, and here comes a pack of one manufacturer that overtakes us at the end. Um, but man, it was a uh, it was a great weekend overall. The uh, stands were packed. I mean, it was packed all weekend. Like the infield was jumping. I mean. From when I got there on Wednesday, infield was slammed. Yep. Uh, the duels, that was the most, the biggest crowd I'd seen for the duels in for, forever. I mean, I, I don't even remember the last time. So, uh, you know, NASCAR, great job. Just getting that place sold out. Uh, great vibe. Um, you know, tons of celebrities there this weekend. Miss, hold your girl. Better, hold your girl tight. It, Pete Davidson was there, so... Uh, Mr. Steele, your girl. So you, it's, it's funny yeah. if you saw the pictures of Pete Davidson today. He's very incognito. His hood's up. He's got sunglasses on. But it's like the opposite of what he's trying to do, right? Because I feel like the more incognito you look, the less incognito you look. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Like, it's like, hey, I'm trying to look low key, but. I'm actually looking look very high key. Yeah, yeah like, right. Because yeah, yeah. I'm wearing a jacket and the hood's up and it's 75 degrees outside. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, but it was cool. I mean, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, this is our biggest race of the year. And it's like, I hate that, like, now it's, I mean, we're just getting ready to go racing, right? Like the, I hate to say it, but like the real racing. I mean, that's real racing, of course. But like, we're not, like this weekend is no indication whatsoever of like, who's going to be fast during the year. Right. Like, you know, that's just, we won't know. I mean, when you get through the West Coast, swing you've got you know somewhat of the you're going to get an idea at california simulation will be the biggest factor in you know who's fast there plus aerodynamics obviously it's a fast racetrack um vegas then we go to vegas um and we're uh that's a that's a high speed um you know motor type track and then you get to the shorter track that races like a short track of phoenix so once you get through these three weeks we're going to really kind of have an indication of who's good who's for real who's for real and who's not so could you hear uh the jets and all that going on in your car that was a big uh to do uh today that everyone yes. was very happy with including people on social well, media, i can tell I you this we had a nascar meeting the day before maybe two days before and they were practicing and I'm, I'm telling you, I, when I heard, there was one that shook the seal, and I'm like, mm -hmm. it's over. This is it. <laughs> Armageddon is here. Uh, they were they were close. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it, it, the fans loved it. That, that's great. And um, what was the Super Bowl the first all-female um, pilots? Yeah. Oh, right? yes. It was all-female. Yes. So, so that 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 was awesome. Um, last week, uh, Fox. This is the the kickoff for Fox. I saw a I, lot of yeah. A lot I of people think were. We made change on this podcast. We did. I, come on, someone at Fox, you got to admit it. They got rid of my goatee. They did. <laughs> they, they did. Went back to the less pronounced. They did. And I, and softer I need, look. I need to see. Did they adjust everyone's? Did they tone everyone's face down slightly? I think I, last year, I think the sketches were a little less pronounced. You didn't have a goatee. The skin tones were a little softer. And I think that's what they went back to. I could be wrong, but I, I think they changed it for everybody, not just you. Okay. So, well, since we have their ear, do we Let have anything know. else? Do we have anything else that we want to request? I, well, uh, what else didn't you like? Uh, what else did Twitter not like? Listen, I was in the race I got car. A few things. I was I was in the race car. Listen, Fox, the awesome partner of ours. They they like you know they just came off of doing the Super Bowl, which is awesome. They did a great job. Uh, Greg Olson, man, super underrated commentator. Um, you know, I know they're they're gonna pay Brady some money, but let's not leave out Greg Olson, Carolina guy. He uh, yeah. he did a great job. Fox has been a, a big partner. They do all the the trucks, um, Xfinity for the half a year as well. So, um, you know, I think they're gonna be part of our, our long-term future.
is there anything top secret that's on the dash? That was the first thing of the weekend that mm. had Twitter up in arms is that the dash cams from your helmet uh, was blurred. And it, it, it's kind of an eyesore when you're watching on TV. Agree. You, Agree. You got the top half of the screen that's clear, right? Looking at the windshield and the bottom half is just blurry. I think they cleaned it up for they did the race race day, right? Because yeah. I know, I mean, our, our fan base is very critical of, of Fox and, and I get it. I get it. Like there's a lot of things that they don't like. Like evidently the commercials were super loud and they were super often. Um, but you know, race fan, let me just tell you, like this is where they really pay the bills. Like, you know, all of our TV partners, they want the Daytona 500. It's our most watch event of of the year so this is where they get a lot of bills paid is 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 you know for 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 what they pay nascar is during this event so it's difficult because you know we are in the middle of a you know we're in the middle of play while they do cut to commercial and so i guess they kind of get unlucky at times because a lot of crashes happen when like hey we're back by the way look at these cars yeah. the junkyard here um so it's tough. I know a lot of people really push for, uh, you know, give us a side-by-side, -side, right? But, I mean, people aren't going to pay for ads as much if it's side-by-side -side for sure. So, um, it's a tough balance. I don't know what the right answer is. That, I'm not, that's certainly not my specialty. Um, and and they, they write a big check. And so, they. It, it's a very, very tough thing. But all we can do is try to help the world a little at a time by getting us our faces back. You know, the, you know what? I do have one little thing. A little tweak. A little tweak, Fox. Make sure all of our, our head shots are the same angle. Like one, like I think they moved me from being face on goatee to now I'm looking away. And it's like you don't even see my it's face. It's a hero shot. Yeah. That's what it's called. And I don't like the angle either. You know how like, you know, you accidentally hit your camera phone and it's on selfie mode and, you know, you got like a real bad turkey neck. It's just terrible. <laughs> like... I hate that. And so I feel like, you know, people know nowadays it's eye level or higher. Come on, people. Uh, you get that, on me about that. Give us that strong jawline. We uh, want that. I'll take a photo of you. Oh, and, yeah. You were so. I had to, I had to straighten you up makes, last year. I'm like, Jared, stop taking pictures from my ankles, bro. <laughs> it makes you look like more. No, like it I'm makes my ass look it. huge. Okay. Come on, man. <laughs> Like, it's whatever's closest to the camera looks bigger. Don't do yes that to me. No. I already got I already got junk, dude. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> All you, right. As you get older, what your uh, preferences are. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know what else we got from, from Daytona. I mean, I, I overall, I just, I, I'm bummed. I mean, I, I'm still sulking over here, even though I'm, I, I've got a job to do, but Got to give props to you know the the people that that ran great. Obviously, RFK, great cars. Ricky for winning. Um, Chevy's for the great strategy at the end. Um, man, they, it's just uh, there was a lot of elements. Do you to know this where race. you finish this race? They say it's seventeenth. I don't know. I felt like I maintained pace car speed once the caution came out, but I was f destroyed. I mean, you did, I got you crossed clipped. the start finish line and then looped through the grass to come to pit road right because you my were backwards on pit road because my car wouldn't turn right uh right. One, one way or another i had to well, spin really it around to turn one way yeah i know I, I get it but it wouldn't turn hard enough left because i was crab walking across this finish line so i'm surprised as, as hard as i hit the fence the car could even keep moving but last car on the lead lap 17th ho-hum it sucks um but, you know, better than I started last year. What did what did you make of your uh, third driver for 2311 oh, this weekend? I mean, that guy. I, Travis. Yeah. That guy so, didn't... yeah, he, you know, he doesn't have any more races. I see a lot of people asking questions about Travis. He was he was the highest finishing 2311 car, uh, second highest finisher for the Toyota. Uh, he did great. He finished all the laps. That's all we could really ask from him. And he had a blast like that's that's a check check box for him and i and i'm so happy for him he was a great guy to work with he worked really hard at this you know I, I can't emphasize enough like how serious he took this now he's a he's a fun guy joking around guy 
joyful guy on TV, but like when it's work time, he is serious and, and down to business. So, uh, love to have Travis back sometime. Uh, he was a great partner of ours and, um, yeah, did, did a great job for us. Leading up to r the race, is he in meetings with you? Like how does he, what input does he have when you're meeting post qualifying or post practice this past weekend? Like what, what does he bring to the table? Um, <laughs> he actually, <laughs> uh, he, he mentioned one driver, but it was not that driver. Uh, he, he, I think he was like, uh, Ricky's Stenhouse's car wasn't very good and whatnot. And they're like, uh, cause he was talking about, Hey, it was a Ford. And we're like, Hey, that was, that's Riley Herbs. He was like, Oh, Oh yeah. Okay. So he's like, I'll just shut up now. I'm sorry, guys. please <laughs> proceed, proceed. Uh, but no, he, um, his feedback was really good Be you know, again, he hasn't run a NASCAR car in t over 10 years or something like that. And, uh, you know, I was so nervous when he went out to qualify cause I'm like, I was walking out to go qualify and I'm just like, I knew it was his turn and, or I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I heard it inside the bus because I, I was in the bus, right? Screaming at the TV, yeah. cussing. My mom's yelling at me th for throwing all the F-bombs, me saying, go, go, you know, cause they have the ghost car. Like, is he going to get in or not? Oh my gosh. We were so excited. And, but I heard his car and I'm like, get up to speed, shift gears. Okay. He shift. He, oh, so he, you, you can hear from the bus. You can yes, hear I can hear him accelerate. Okay. I can hear him accelerate, and I'm like, okay, he didn't miss any gears. Just did he optimize it? And then when I saw him get to the line, I'm like, okay, he's at adequate speed. So it's good. Uh, you know, a fun. Our our very our main main voyage is is that what it's called? Uh, having a third car. Um, I don't know when we'll do it again. Uh, whenever the stars align, but. Man, we got some torn up shit to, to, to fix. I hopefully we got enough parts to get to the West Coast. But um, but yeah, team did a great job. Travis did a great job. NASCAR enjoyed having them. Um, shout out to Jimmy. Jimmy did a great job. Um, I, I, I Jimmy def was in the was in the hunt. Yep. At the end. I got to give him props. He did a great job. Um, speaking of which, I don't know if we should talk about it. Maybe we'll just mention it. I guess there's some articles out there where King Richard and Jimmy are at odds. Ooh, they're they're that, that's on our note sheet from Yeah. We won't dive into it huge. You can find them for yourselves, but I guess Richard kind of feels pushed out a little bit. Um, but hey, that's is what it is. Jimmy did a great job. Um Eric Jones was a little sleeper that I thought would run a little better than he did. Uh his super speedway, he's been really good on the speedways here last few years but you know they didn't they didn't have a great speed weeks uh they got caught up in an early wreck uh but but interesting to see where that team i be very interested to see where that team stacks up uh here uh in the next few weeks um speaking of which okay so i know there's a lot of dirty mo fans that are listening to our podcast and that listen to other ones uh, there's there's that there's a that VIP experience that they do in Vegas. They're going to do it again. It's March fifth, um, and you get to go enjoy the cup race from a suite where the food is endless and the drinks are bottomless. And if you know the guys from DBC, oh, you're going to need bottomless yeah. drinks. Those guys get after it. So you can hang out with Mike Davis, uh, co-host on the Dale Jr. Download and the Door Bunker Clear guys. And you can get the VIP treatment. Unfortunately, Dirty Mode did not pay me enough for me to do that quite yet. So maybe I'll come to the next one. And totally a kidding, cup people. Race? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, good point. Well, what are the spotters doing? They got to work. That's true. It's got to be some sort of hospitality before. Yeah. But I this you thing sell, this race. thing sells out like really quickly. So I you need to go to dirtymomedia.com slash ultimate experience to get your tickets. Um, and you better do it quick. And this podcast is going to be coming out probably in the next 12 hours and it probably will be sold out in the next 16. So if you're listening, if you want to go see when the guys, go shoot the shit with them, go do it right now. When do they go on sale? Um, I think it's already on sale on sale. So I'm just, I'm just, oh, you're, you're just I'm the making the last okay. push to get the last few tickets Got sold. It. Yeah. You never know. I might stop by. So. I'll do a pro bono. <laughs> no, uh, no, go in and uh, and see those guys. They've been doing it the last few years, and it's and it's been a huge success. And listen, those guys like to party in Vegas anyway, so go check it out. 
Um, Jared, any final thoughts before we head off to the West Coast? We will be, FY, on location for the next right. few weeks. I'm not coming we're back gonna home. We're going to have to figure that out. How we're going to do video, if we're going to do video. The people want the video. The pe- they they want to see where I'm going to go stay for a few weeks, right? Right. You know it's got a pickleball court. That's all I know. I, we should just host right do, from you the pickleball court. You already have it court. booked? Oh, man, I booked... I booked my Air, what are we, what? I booked my Airbnbs like six eight months in advance. Really? I, I didn't. Okay. Okay. See now you're calling me out. Well, I asked I, Austin, I, the hey, last hey, couple do you, times. Do you know where Denny's staying in a couple of weeks? Uh, no, I don't know. Because I, I haven't invited him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's oh, just man, me and how you. Have changed. Yeah, it's just <laughs> me and you for for right now. But um, yeah, so we're, I'm gonna stay out on the West Coast uh, during. The swing. So I'm going to go out to Cali on, uh, you know what? I'm actually going to go Thursday and say hi to some Monster Energy guys and, um, and then fly out Friday, go to California, do some racing that weekend, then go straight to Scottsdale where I will post up for a few weeks. So we're going to be on location on the West Coast. Um, we you, don't, again, you, it appears we don't know how we're going to do it, but yes. we're still, you know what I just thought about? Oh my God, the hours are going to suck. How are we going to get the people their podcasts on Monday afternoons? We're three hours back or two hours back. I don't know. I never know when we're in Phoenix. We're going to have to do it after the race. So that's where that'd be good for us. No, that'll be great for us. us. That's great for us. Let's do it. We're recording this and it's going to be midnight in 10 minutes. Yeah. But out there, it'll be like eight o'clock, eight 30. Okay. Well, let's wrap this up guys. I know we got a little long winded last week. Uh, when you clicked on it and you saw it was an hour and 15 minutes, you're like, oh my gosh, what the hell? So you knock, you're going to knock this one out on your drive to and from work tomorrow. Uh, or not to, unless you're on the West Coast, apparently. <laughs> but we'll see you next week uh, from Scottsdale, right after California. See you. Check out Dirty Mo Media on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram.